Trump, Trump taken off, off Twitter. Twitter. Why the president's account was shut down last night. Hillary's secret takeover. The bombshell accusation from former DNC chair Donna Brazile that Clinton helped rig the nomination away from Bernie Sanders. Plus, why does Keith Olbermann think the Trumps are a bigger threat to America than ISIS? He's hitting the table. Let's go! Let's fire up Hot Topics with Whoopi, Sarah Haynes, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. For 11 minutes <laughs> yesterday, a hush <laughs> fell over Jerusalem. Oh my God. There was peace <laughs> on Twitter because the personal account of the man in the White House was deactivated <laughs> by an outgoing customer support employee. <laughs> <laughs> now, can, was... you, can you please deactivate the presidency? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he would, he, and, and he said, the guy in the house said, my Twitter account was taken out for 11 minutes by a rogue employee. I guess the word must finally be getting out and having an impact. What word? What? <laughs> That's from Donald? Is that what? from the that, Donald? That is from, he tweeted that this morning. Um, <coughs> Anybody? <laughs> you know, people are trying to censor him? <laughs> I just, you know, I, I don't know. I thought it was dope. I, mean, I was like, you know, you go out like that. He's like a Twitter patriot. But but what, what strikes me as odd is other people's accounts have been taken down for a lot less than the behavior we see exhibited from the presidency every single day. Yeah, like who? Some of the things Rose that McGowan, yeah. Rose, Rose McGowan, I mean, some of, you know, he can be a Twitter bully. And I thought Twitter was a platform where that kind of thing was was unacceptable and his account has never been taken down. But the scary part, the one thing that did scare me all joking aside is some people tweeted things like I want to buy this employee a pizza like good for you yeah. uh, <laughs> but then other people were saying the access of an account with this much uh, influence yeah. is a little scary because mm. if someone had written something like we're going to war with North oh, Korea, that's true. you know, there's a danger in the access. So you'd almost think they should add some checks to the higher or, level. Maybe or, or, maybe, or maybe or yeah. maybe information like that shouldn't be on Twitter. That's maybe point. information like we're going to war yeah. should be something that, you know, a whole bunch of people get together and say it in camera so you can see their faces. Mm. See, yeah. I don't want to read that. I don't want to read it on Twitter. Yeah. I want to read, ooh, <coughs> whoopee, your butt is big. Oh, that God. I can accept on yeah. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know yeah. the policies of the United not States. And I get that statements. it's, I, I get that it's, this is now a new world and it's evolving, but I'm not there yet. I yeah. haven't evolved yeah. that far. Many of us aren't. But my life revolves around our president's tweets, whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. I used to have alerts on my phone. I can't do it anymore. Oh my he gosh, your phone was seven out this day. morning. Like, I, I actually <laughs> was like, this isn't emotionally good for me to like wake up and have every Trump tweet and go to sleep with every Trump tweet. And I think yeah. the collective American no, public at large, <laughs> yeah, I, I, need, I did turn it off, but I agree with you with what you're saying. What if someone had hacked in and we had sort of a war of the world situation where he said, we're nuking North Korea now. People would panic and yeah. riot in the streets. So my concern is more the national security aspect of this. And it's hilarious. I think it's funny that like some person was like, I'm going out and I'm going to take down the Twitter account at the same time. But there is like real life ramifications. I love the idea happened. that the, when, when, when you're on your way out, you, you want to do something like there was a story I read last week or something about a guy who's on his deathbed and he hated Trump so much but as this is a true story his wife said to him Trump was impeached yeah. and he died happy <laughs> Sweet life. 
I can, can die, die happy. happy. Yeah. There was my favorite obituary <laughs> during the election was a woman said, I would rather go into the arms of our sweet Lord than vote between Hillary or Trump. I'd rather just die here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dave Chappelle decision. did an amazing sketch on kicking the sign on the way out. And oh, kind of giving, yes. Dropping some F. And he had to ask for his job back. <laughs> so be careful on what you do out, going out, because you might yeah. be coming back in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I don't know. I get that people get a lot of their information from Twitter. I get it. But I don't want... That's too public for me. It's just too public. If you're... I mean, if stuff is going on that has to do with national security and stuff, I... I don't want to read it on Twitter. I don't want to see it on Twitter. It's like all this stuff now, you know, that's, they keep showing the, the guy that did the bombing. and Stop showing. I don't want to see all this because it gives, it, it tells people all your moves. Yeah. Well, I don't want to know all your moves. I don't want to know what, what you were thinking when you did this. I want you to just go away. It's very unpresidential, I, I think, when you have presidential statements on social media. I mean, this president is using it in a way that it's never been but used no before. But no one's able to lasso him in, so I have more no. faith that the company could make some guidelines to protect some of these things so they weren't hacked, because I have more faith in Twitter than I do the president. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, and that's, that's saying a lot. <laughs> but the problem is it's not, I mean, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. This isn't going to happen. It has completely changed the game of how politics work, how, how primary politics work in particular. Do I you mean, think it's changing for the better? I, I, I'm not... I don't like the impulsive tweeting, like mm -hmm. the Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas mm -hmm. things. I do think that, for me, is is below the decorum of what I would like in the mm -hmm. White House. But mm -hmm. I don't think it's going anywhere. Well, he, I think this is how we live now. But I like that he calls people names, because then we can. Mm -hmm. You know? I can call him names. When the president, my book, my book I mean, the, great, the Great Gas Bag, available now on Amazon, <laughs> uh, calls him the name, uh, the, uh, the Great Gas Bag. And that's, be, uh, her that's new be, book. Be, but my new book, book, which you can get. Which is but, on Amazon. The reason that... I could do that yes. is because he calls Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas and he calls Hillary Clinton. to have a comeback. Well, not, it's not that they need to go joke. low, but okay. the communication she's talking about did, what, whether you like it or not, and I certainly have mixed opinions on all of it, it was effective, and it works, and it still I works. Missed, well, I missed well, the substance, though. Like, when yeah. I watched the primaries, the Republican primary, I, I remember watching and wanting to hear them say something, and they kept getting to name-calling and small yes. hands and yeah, all this, yeah. and I thought, but wait, I, don't, I can't even tell the 16 of you apart anymore because yeah. no one's talking about anything. Yeah, Let's but remember, the RNC Hillary Clinton won the popular community. vote. Three, more, three million more people voted for someone that spoke a lot differently than Donald Trump. Well, let's, let's talk about that because there's a whole conversation. Three million more people no, voted for. Yeah. And he's a first <laughs> whole yeah, but I, I, I do wonder because you know I don't I don't want to be told by anybody who's saying they're going to represent me. I don't want them telling me that people are rapists and murderers. Yeah. I don't want to hear that the Constitution. You know, doesn't mean anything. That that mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to hear that heroes are not heroes when well, they fought for my right. How do you think I, I feel every day in my party with what he said about my? I take it day by day because if I wake up in the morning obsessing over what he said about my father, I'll kill myself from the inside out. And I'm a political analyst, yeah. and I need to take it moment by moment. I don't like these things either. I don't think any American sitting here, even the most hardcore Trump supporters, like things like that. But it is then the that, reality we're living in. It is the reality, but it doesn't have to be. If you don't like that you can demand better from the guy. Sure. You don't. You can. You can get his message. You can say you're not do. We're not getting the jobs we need. Or I feel people are coming over and not doing what they're supposed to be. I can hear all that. Yeah. But you can't couch it in it's them. We got to get rid of them. You can't couch it in that because I've seen that. I've lived through that when it's them and what happens when people get that mindset. And we're seeing it. We're seeing people have been freed up to say stuff that you would, that's just decorum. You don't do that. You don't do it. And to have it come from this man in the White House. I you about to say <laughs> yes. You know. Tick tock, Tick tock. You know. Tick -tock. You know. Tick -tock. Now. <laughs> that you have to tell everybody where you're headed this weekend. Oh, on Sunday I'm flying to Puerto Rico okay. uh, to do a special yeah. report. Um, uh, just to, you know, to see how things are, the state of things, um, to really come back and, and tell people what is really going on in, in, okay. in my, on my Good. island. All right. So. Good for you. Well Hot done. Topic. We will be right back with more Hot Topics. Later, Falling House of Cards. 
the shocking on-set sexual assault allegations against Kevin Spacey that shut down production. Puerto Rico. We've all seen the stunning images of devastation. Now, next week, Sonny Hostin travels there, inside the harsh damage zone, with live updates on what's really happening on the island her family calls home. A must-see View special report next week on ABC. Still ahead, Keith Oberman hits the Hot Topics table. So, honey, this, this messed everybody's head up. Former DNC interim chair Donna Brazile, who will be here on Tuesday, by the way, just wrote a bombshell book claiming that a year before Hillary Clinton clinched the nomination, her campaign agreed to bail out the bankrupt DNC in exchange for day-to-day -day control over operations. So <coughs> Bernie Sanders was basically ignored. By the Democratic but, well, National yeah, Committee. by the DNC. Yes, which was a bad thing. Mm. It was a very bad thing. And, you know, Donna Brazil has just handed a lovely gift to, to Trump <laughs> right now mm -hmm. with this revelation of the DNC. And um, uh, it's not a pretty picture. It's, no. not, it's a nasty side. It's not criminal. It's unethical, maybe, but it's not criminal. And mm -hmm. it's not going to distract from the Mueller investigation, in case you're wondering, Donald. <laughs> but it was, it was bad. And it just yeah. shows you that politics on both sides yeah. have to be, uh, they need Nasty. a purge. Yes. They need to be uh, per totally vomited out and yeah. start new. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it at all. I mean, you know, I was, um, I, I think it's common knowledge. My best friend, um, Stephanie Rowling Flake, was the DNC secretary during this time. Um, and Donna Brazil is also a very good friend of mine. So I, I, I believe Donna. I'm, I'm not finished reading her book, but I have reached out to her. And I believe Donna when she says this is what she found, because she's a pretty forthright person. Um, and, and something has got to change. I mean, not only did they perhaps ignore Bernie. If you remember, during the campaign, um, Sanders' campaign was concerned that the early primary debate schedule was very limited against his favor. He spoke out about yeah, it. Yeah, he said that um, party money was used for Clinton fundraising and not for his fundraising, mm -hmm. and that briefly they cut off Sanders' access to the uh, party voter file shortly before the New Hampshire primary. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to win, you win fair and square. You don't play these kinds of games. And yeah. I was really disgusted and disappointed Well, and it feeds into so many this. of her, um, people that didn't like her, that said there was something they couldn't trust and that, yeah. you know, there was something going on here. It kind right. of disappointed me because when I read this, I, I haven't defended that part, but a part of me thought, there's no way that all went on. And then you read it and you're like, is there anything it's else? depressing. But it also yeah. makes you more cynical about the political process. This is yeah. a breakdown in our democracy at the very basic level. And I also, I've always liked Donna Brazile. I was shocked when it came out that she had passed along a debate question early on to Hillary Clinton's campaign before it happened. These are things that shocked me. I always thought her to be a really good ethical person in politics. She was fired for trust that. Trust me. Yes, she was, which isn't mm -hmm. that hard to find. Or is, and we me, should ask her about to that find. on Tuesday. But I will say that for whatever you're saying about the mockery of the Republican primaries, and God knows I had my issues with a lot of it. The RNC wasn't putting their hand in the bag trying to get Trump elected. He was the last candidate the establishment of the Republican right. Party wanted. So the RNC wasn't rigging the game to get Trump elected, which is something I think no, now showcases. The Russians were rigging the game. That's the difference. That is the difference. First of all, not everything goes back to Mueller and Russia. This is a bad day for you guys. You have Elizabeth Warren coming out, the great new hope for the Democratic Party, saying that this, that this was rigged in order for Hillary Clinton when you have the next yeah. possible we nominee for your party side. saying the that. Don't. Yeah, all my, well, to the my comment was less about the mockery this of the Republican to primaries. This is nothing Russia. It the was, DNC's problem right now has nothing to do with Russia. What I was no. saying is more that when you, when you were saying this is the world we live in, I said that's sad because as a voter who wants to participate in my democracy, <laughs> I watched these primaries and I watched these debates to get some information to be able to inform myself yeah. about what these... So I was saying the fact that this is the new reality is scary yeah. because to make an informed decision as a voter, I need to have something to watch. Well, but this, what's this worse, a bad primary should, debate or a rigged election? This, the, all of I it think is they're worse. all there's, bad. There's no, there's no bad or worse. The, 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 the really terrible thing about all this is, I, you know, people do what they do to do this stuff. What I don't understand is, why did everybody wait? Yes. What that is a valid why point. They, why did everybody wait to tell this information? You mean Donna Brazil? No, and the other people say people they knew. Other people say, well, well, I was aware of this. And so, for me... 
You know, why are you pursing your lips at me? When you say other people uh, knew oh. they, when you say other people oh. knew about about well, this other DNC people had stuff, to have known yeah. some of this because, like, if if Robbie Mook was writing emails to well, Donna, like contracts I, I and think things, in, then what I've read in Donna's book is that um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz knew. Well, but that's that no I, one else knew. Well, but there's but no some, way. But, there's, but you somebody, have to have more players. DNC then. leadership didn't know. She says. But well, we'll but, ask her about but, it Tuesday. But if they made a deal, yep. who made the deal? Was Debbie. it just Debbie by herself? Nobody knew. Apparently, I, can't, so. I don't buy that. And why then does Elizabeth Warren sort of say, "Well, I, I got it. I, I get it. This, I think this she happened. got it now." But that, that's, yeah. that's those but are my some of the point is, we have other people. Whoever it is, Donovan, whoever it is, why'd you wait? And come on, don't be naive. You know what I mean? The, the well, DNC I convention, mean, I mean, that was all everyone was talking about, that this is a rigged game for Hillary, well, the Bernie only, supporters. The, but, but, you know, it... it I'm sorry. If, if you care about what we do and you have this information and you hold it, I'm mad at you. Yeah. yeah. I'm mad that you held it. I, I, and whoever else knew, whoever it is... I'm mad at you. Just like I'm mad at these people who went to Russia to do all this. I'm mad because that's not how we do stuff. Yeah. Right. That's not how we do stuff. And if you're going to bitch and moan about young people and then this is how you treat them, how are they supposed to know what we're supposed to be looking at as a yeah. nation? How are they supposed to know when they can't get a straight answer from either side? It's yeah. caca. Well, yeah. that's why Bernie was mad. Bernie yeah. was mad, and for good reason. Yeah. Bernie was angry. It was. And, and I, you know what? I think they saw Bernie Hindsight as... Hindsight is 2020, but maybe Bernie could have won because he had very similar shtick yeah, you know what? to Trump, but yeah, on the I other know, side. I know, but shtick doesn't make it, as well, we're seeing. Well, shtick is starting to really get shticky. I'm just shtick talking about getting elected. It got into yeah. the White House. But the most yeah. important point Whoopi's making is millennials, the <laughs> cynicism and the lack of wanting to be involved in any capacity at all in our democratic process, voting, et cetera. This gives people another reason to think the system is rigged. Why should I Maybe be involved Maybe they need to take money out of politics, and then you'll see some well, good they people did that. They, they, they had, had it that way. They had it that but way. But there was a big was, Republican push yes. for campaign finance, and yes. that's where we went and wrong. That, when the Republican right. push when we, to yeah. change campaign Not finance laws. My father was the architect of that bill, but all right. That was where we went wrong. I have a question, though, sure. for you about the money. The RNC is paying about $500,000 in legal fees to, for, for Trump Jr. and Trump. What about that? What is that okay? What is completely valid. It is on both sides. I'm not negating that, but yeah. I'm saying for us to sit here and sort of say that it's not on both sides yeah. is obviously Crazy. false. But, but it's still a false it's, equivalency because one is about a foreign government. Let us not forget that. Yeah. It's, it's all crap. I don't want to it's relitigate all crap. the dossier. When it, all lives in the, when it lives this way, it's all crap. When we can't defend what happened, there's an issue. And the well, other thing I just want to say, which is important, is young people, there is a reason you should be involved in the vote. There's a reason. Because if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. Because we're getting older. And this is going to be yours. And you better take care of it. You know? People died for the right to be able to do this. We'll be back. women died for the right for women to vote. Keith Olbermann here to tell the ladies about my new book, which I'll now hold... Uh, actually, I can't hold it up because it's called... Oh, no, I can't actually say what it's called, uh, what the title is either. Anyway, it's in bookstores now. Ask for it by name. Keith Olbermann and I have a lot, in, a lot in common. We both think the president is mentally and emotionally unstable. And we both wrote books about it. The difference is I can say the full title of... I cannot say the full title of his book on daytime TV. <laughs> Why not? Because... He's the author of Trump is Bleeping Crazy, and this is not a joke. So please welcome Keith Oberman. <laughs> so, Keith, we're going to get to your feelings about how mentally unstable... No, the, the title sums it up. The title does. Yeah. I know. Joy likes to talk about it, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Because I, I do know that you had an apartment in Trump Tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, in uh, and you... Trump Palace on the east side, yes. Yeah, on the east side. And what happened? You couldn't get rid of it? No one wanted it? Uh, no, <laughs> what, but... Uh... <laughs> 
that's what happened after I got rid of it. I was ha I got rid of it at only like a 20% loss, and another guy bought it from me, and then about three weeks later said, oh, my God, what have I done? Really? Why? Nobody uh, wants to live in you the can't sell the You can't sell the apartments. Because his oh. name is on it. Because his name is on so it. So they took his it? name off. He, he manages <laughs> mo some of them and owns some of them, but the name is on there as part of the management deal. But do you own it? Do I own it? No, I sold it. Okay. I got out, and then <laughs> this other guy bought it, and his excuse was I didn't realize it was so far from the park. <laughs> like they had moved it after he bought it. And he lost 5%, and everybody else in that building who's tried to sell can't, including the guy who owns the penthouse. If you want a nice $15 million penthouse for $8 million, there's one over there on the east side. Well, so he can sell it. So, oh, I'm crying they're trying, over, they're over they're the trying, loss. They're trying, the, the, it's so bad, they're trying to rename it, which costs a lot of money because you've got to put up new signs and everybody's oh. got to get new uniforms. Bring the gold they, down. Exactly. The gold yeah, there's a, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of crappy gold on that building, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you. And so they were going to, this, this guy who owns the penthouse who was told everybody who owned there if you change the name you vote to change the name i'll pay for 10 percent of the total cost of renaming the building still they couldn't do it wow so that's the situation this is new york that's so why. it's a metaphor it's, it's also a metaphor for america but thank you very much that's, i'm here all week okay. well speaking of metaphors <laughs> yes donna brazil yeah says that uh hillary clinton hijacked the dnc and the nomination what Work, think? worked out well for hillary didn't it <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> What are we talking about? Well, what she, we said, she's a disappointed that it hasn't come out, uh, that they're now coming out. What do you think of that? About two-thirds of it actually did come out. Because what it's, it's an interpretation of how she went into a chaotic Democratic National Committee mm -hmm. at, with terrible fundraising and terrible data, certainly. They were yeah. well behind, obviously well behind, all the competitors in the election, mm -hmm. the Republicans and the Russians. And now <laughs> she, she shored that up on, at her own expense and her committee's expense. And that can be turned around to saying, well, she manipulated the whole, the whole mm -hmm. thing. I and mean, so there's two interpretations of it, but the bottom line is she lost the election. And so whatever was done there, it didn't work out particularly well for her. So it's like, to me, I'm interested in this, and your point about it not coming out and coming out in a book is a good one, but I don't know that it's... I mean, we're talking okay. about this, and it's being used as some sort of balance to the Russian investigation. It's primaries in one party that lost the election, as mm -hmm. opposed to whether or not another, comp another country came in and mm -hmm. sabotaged our election. And stole it. So uh, to right. me, it's like, this is interesting, oh, but I don't think this has a lot of permanent impact <laughs> okay. on things. Well, but it might clean out the entirety yeah, right. of the candidacy stable. And the one thing we, I think we're agreed with, that the Democrats probably need a new candidate or seven or 10 new candidates yeah. in yes. 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will not run. If nominated, I will not accept. Me either. But, and it's not going to happen anyway, so it's nice to be able to say it, though. Well, let's talk about all the shoes that dropped this week in regard to the Mueller investigation. Yeah. You First with Manafort, oh, Gates, yeah. Papadopoulos. That's now they're one. talking about Jeff Sessions once again um, possibly lying under oath. What's your biggest takeaway from this week, and how do you predict this will end? Papadopoulos was wearing a wire since July. That's a, that's maybe. Yeah. That's maybe. We don't know that for but sure. He was a proactively cooperating witness. What does that mean? It means he was Th wearing. That a means wire. he was either wearing a wire, <laughs> or he was taking really good notes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's likely a wire. Yeah, it's yeah. it's likely a wire. And if not, it, they, not only did they not know about it, but when it turned out that his boss, who until yesterday was the nominee for Secretary of Agriculture, and then withdrew. He had talked to the prosecutors, or he talked to the Senate committee, right, mm -hmm. um, in, in August, and they found so. this out on CNN. Mm -hmm. oh, so, or, in other so. words, what the, the takeaway this week, particularly with the, with the Manafort indictment, which I think people saw coming, but we're yeah. still guessing, was it Manafort, was it Flynn, mm -hmm. was it Ivanka, who's going to be indicted? Yeah. Donald Jr. And, right, Jr. And, and all the attention's yeah. paid to that, and here's this confession of this guy who says, no, I met with the Russians and talked about setting yeah. up a meeting between Trump and Putin, yeah. which would be exactly what they've charged the entire campaign with, because I was in the campaign. But Nobody might, knew about that. But he that. might fire Mueller. He no, might. Everybody's talking about it. Now he claims he doesn't even know that guy. He's like, he's an errand boy, well, coffee boy. There's two stories to put together, which is delightful. There's one from this morning uh, and one from two weeks ago in the controversy with the, with the, the widow of, of one of the lost servicemen in Niger, where she recounted her version of the conversation that they had. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, it's wrong, and you trust my version of it because I have one of the greatest memories of all time. Yes. Uh, Today yes. he was asked about the Pompadopoulos meeting and went, I don't remember that meeting very well. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the memory, the greatest memory of all time? Nobody got to take you the follow-up. That was, yes, but that nobody, last what he 
have said was, I don't remember that saying that either, which would have been the follow-up. <laughs> you know, so, you, but to me, yeah. that's, the, that's the takeaway. It's like all this stuff in the Mueller investigation has literally been happening with nobody knowing about it. We don't know what else is going on right. there. And I, no. you know, it's like, get your 65-pound bag of popcorn. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You, you also recently got into a bit of a Twitter thing with Donald Trump Jr. Oh, my. Um, a lot of people are, of course, frustrated by Trump's reaction to the terror attack here in New York. Mm -hmm. um, but you said recently uh, via tweet, that Trump and his family have done more damage to America than bin Laden and ISIS combined. Yes. Do you believe that? Yeah, we're, we're, we did really well after 9-11. I don't think we, the country has given itself enough oh. credit for what we did not do after 9-11. We, we did not restrict all of the freedoms in this country. We did not yeah. single out people. We yeah. did not destroy the fabric. people died on 9-11. Yes. I mean, the comparison is absurd. Well, yeah, do you mean the time but, after? But, then, but more people died in the Iraq war than died in 9-11. We didn't need to be there. You think that bin Laden did less to damage America than President Trump? Yes. Can I tell you something? When I hear rhetoric like what? that, <laughs> I want, I think Whoopi and I are in agreement that we want Americans to come together. And rhetoric like that is so damaging. And by the way, my brother fought in the Iraq war and deployed numerous times. So before we start tit for tatting, there's a lot of service in my family. Yes. So I don't understand when you're saying things like that. Bin Laden was dedicated to the destruction of all everything that we hold dear in our freedom. So when you Perhaps compare some people it to think that, Trump is dedicated yeah. to the destruction I believe of, I'm asking of things the question. Too. I believe I'm asking people. Well, I, actually, it was my question. Okay, so what's okay, your answer? So somebody asked well, the damn question. Right, what's the question? What's the question? The question, the question right. is, my question the was, question do you was, honestly was, believe no, that? Right. Why is no. you're making a, uh, you're saying no. that going into Iraq was worse than what bin Laden did on 9-11? Is what you said, yeah, and that's you what believe ticks that. her off. Yeah. I do, and it's not about disrespecting the troops in the slightest. Or the, or the servicemen, or your father's service, I'm which astounds me well, to answer. this day that he was able to, to do that. And his service to this country right now astounds me, and I applaud him. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying the Iraq war was, not, was, was, a, was a waste of these people's lives, and it was unnecessary. From your perspective. Well, I think, I think history suggests that we, the, the two things didn't have anything to do with one another. How do people like us find common ground? Because I'm not interested in this sort of like, because we disagree vehemently on our outlook on the world. And I'm, I'm so tired of, of this kind of rhetoric. And I'm tired of it on the right as well. I'm exhausted with it. I think most, most Americans ca can. Do you want President Trump to fail? Do you want America to fail? Because I'm genuinely curious. Stay tuned no, for the answer. Oh, no. <laughs> when we come back, because Keith is sticking Metzger Wickersham, right now. And we are back with Keith Overman. So, Keith, before we go on to another mm. subject, how do we achieve this kumbaya that we're so craving at the table today? All right, we'll start, we'll start with something. You said, where's our common, where can our common mm -hmm. ground be? Mm -hmm. Let me start by something I, you'll probably find hard to believe. It was true up until one thing that he did, and it's still been true in the background when since. When you say he it's, said I, his I, name. I, I'm getting to it. <laughs> All right. I'm we doing this. You, you did the whole drama bit where we, his answer after this commercial. <laughs> Let me do a little of that, too. Right. Oh, I see. All right. My favorite person in politics, in American politics in the 21st century, century is your father well, okay I no 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 but, but what i'm saying is in 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 retrospect based on what we've seen in the last two years in this country i owe him an apology oh i probably owe george w bush an apology shut up and i would happily take a third term of george w That's not he's the so point. Boring. All the, the things that are supposed to be done. Wouldn't you like a boring president for even three weeks not with right those now? Policies, no. My point is, no. those policies are going to happen one way or the other. My argument is not about the politics or the policies. It's about I don't think the guy is stable, and I don't care if he's. And he said to me he was a liberal Democrat the last time I talked to him in the in the flesh, Trump. So I don't care if that's that's true. So my point is this. My attitude towards this administration is. We're stuck with it, or I'm stuck with it from my point of view, no matter what happens going forward for at least four years. No. Okay? I'm accepting that. I'll take President Pence. Well, I'll carry him to the White House on my shoulders. No. Well, no. Thank you for the apology to me and the Bushes. I think it is actually greatly appreciated. You and I are both out of cable news now, mm -hmm. and I do think.
conversations like this are a lot more productive. You're as happy as I am, they run out of Yeah, you there. seem a very happy to yeah. person. My hair got darker. But you said yeah. you would go out of college. You're exhausted. We were talking in yeah. commercial break. I'm exhausted with yes. it. It exhausts me all day long. And you're, it's another common ground. You're also yes. exhausted with it. Yes, we'd be, I think everybody would be, I, I, my point was serious. I'd be very happy with it. Just, just before we go, nice we have to go. We're out of time. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. But I want to ask you just as we go out, why is he crazy? Tell, tell the yeah. audience why you think he's crazy. <laughs> Joey's been waiting for this. It's the title of the book. <laughs> it's the title of the bleeping book. All right, frankly, it's it's this. When every time I ever saw him, I thought I was dealing with Eddie Haskell. He would come, oh, Mr. Olbermann, how are you doing in the apartment? Are you having a go? Or see him at NBC. Yeah. Absolutely solicitous, nice man. The conversation was always about yeah. me. So I now am telling the fact that after the campaign started, I'm on Bill Maher's show, our yeah. friend who I went to college with, uh -huh. and I'm on his show and I'm revealing that I got conned by this because there's clearly at least two personalities. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, oh my God, Bill is going to kill me for saying this because his BS detector is way higher than mine. Yeah. So I'm now saying this and going, You're just, just shut up and let him destroy you. And I shut up and he goes, basically, golly, that's exactly the way I feel about him. And I went, oh, this, mm. is prof this isn't just a good BS artist. This has to be clinical because this multiple right. personality thing fooled Bill Maher. Yeah. That was my first indication of it. And then I did a piece where I took an um, actual triage test for being a psychopath and applied it and to he, him. He, he, he scored very high. Very high. Oh, okay. Okay. Dr. Trump is sleeping crazy. Uh, uh, what is, what's the tagline? This is this not is a joke. not a joke. Well, we know that. It's true. available now, and our entire audience is going home with a copy. <laughs>Some advice to our guests coming to the view. Hey, hey. When you step onto this stage, face these ladies. Oh, you better be ready to roll, cause it is so on. This November, the view is everything. Sam drop the mic. Taking on the hottest topics and political exclusives. <laughs> then we're dialing things up with, oh, you ready? Tyler Perry, Justin Hartley, Garth Brooks, Mary J. Blige, Diana Ross, that's Miss Ross to you, and Kelly Clarkson. Oh, wait, that's Kelly's song in this promo. Love so soft nice. Wait, there's more. Yeah, we're also partying it up for Whoopi's birthday and throwing Sarah the most awesome baby shower ever. Hashtag crazy. This November, The View is everything. ABC. You know what's better than getting the best? Monday, a stunning drop the mic moment on this. Features of our current politics should ever be regarded as normal. Senator Jeff Flake took on President Trump, and he's live on The View to reveal how he plans to keep up the fight after he leaves the Senate. And it's a View Your Deal takeover with awesome items coming at you all show long. Is this a conversation you want to be part of? Uh, definitely, but I know my place. It's fine. Well, let's let's no, start it up. Then. We were talking about your birthday. It's coming up. Oh, oh yeah. well, <laughs> so it was a I thought it was about you know, <laughs> sex is an important part of a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you handle it if your partner's really not good at it? <laughs> so the website Elite Daily, uh huh, asked women how they dealt with it. What did they say? So, well, what did you say? What do you say? Get off of me. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> you know what I do? What do you do? Is that smoke I smell? <laughs> oh, my God. And then I say, oh, I got to go. That's a good one. That's a little more diplomatic. Yes, than and then I go, but I go out, and then I go out the door. 
And I get in the car, yeah. and I go to my house. <laughs> Very simple. They're not at your house? No. Not at my house. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get people out your house. Whenever, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you can see, because people yeah. get all relaxed and stuff, and it's like, no, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but you clearly don't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, clearly, she didn't say that, get off of me, this one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I kept the one that was good. Yeah. Oh, really, was it? Oh, God. Tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, I don't think you'll be able to because we have to go. We'll be right back. <laughs>Proper etiquette is essential for every social occasion. So the broom said, sorry I'm late, I overswept. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even the... ...investigation into how terrorists are recruiting young, vulnerable Americans online. A young man, Mohammed Dakalala, who once had a very bright future, walks in. Had you ever been arrested before? <laughs> no, man, not at all. He talks about the propaganda videos he and his girlfriend saw online. These videos are dangerously inspirational. Well, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Thanks for coming because it's really nice to have a live audience. We want you to have a great day. Take a little time to